Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're going to talk about Microsoft Forms on mobile devices. First, I'll start with where exactly do you find this Microsoft Forms because it doesn't have its own app. Next, we'll actually go ahead and build that app, which is the Microsoft Forms, directly in the mobile device. We'll also do a little side-by-side -side comparison on what it looks like in the app versus the desktop. And I'll finally end with showing this one little important item because that can potentially cause problems. So stick around, it'll be fun. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now what I have over here is my iPhone, which is a smartphone device. And I'll be doing my, all my demos over here, at least for the next few minutes through this. And now I'll go ahead and share that screen so you can see exactly what's happening. So the first thing you need to be aware of is that there is no app for Microsoft Forms. It all falls under the Office app. So as you can see, I'm sharing on my screen over here, the app which is on the bottom right, which says Office. That's the app that you use to go ahead and build your Microsoft Forms on mobile device. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that app and once you get in, once you're authenticated and everything is in, this is basically your home screen, the home screen which is on the bottom left. And basically that's what it shows. So now from here, if you wanna go ahead and access Microsoft Forms, there's two ways to do that. You can actually click on that big plus button which is on the bottom, at the center of the bottom. If you go and click on it, it has this nice you know, pop-up menu on the bottom. And as you can see on the bottom right, it's Forms. So I can go and click on Forms. So that's the first one way to do it. Right? I'm gonna tap away from that. On the bottom right, there's also a menu option called Actions. If I click on Actions, right over there, you get more actions on the bottom. And over there, right inside the More Actions, uh, actions list, second from the top, it says Create a Form. So I'll go and click on Create a Form. And so that's basically the two ways you can actually get in over here. And that's kind of the first important thing is I introduced you to the Office apps and then where to go ahead and find that Microsoft Forms. All right, cool, let's keep continuing. Right now we are here, we're gonna go ahead and build our app and we'll go and actually take a look at these features that are available. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and pro provide a title. And as you can see, it gives you almost that same functionality as you have available on the desktop side. So over there, I'll go ahead and now change the untitled form and I'll say my live demo one and I'll leave the description as is and now even though I hit done which is that done actually came from the mobile device operating system what I got to do is I got to hit that checkbox which is on the top right so now that I do it my title of the form is ready and now I can start adding all those other fields over there so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the bottom it says plus add question and when I do that I get these four options available now this again is very similar to what we have on the desktop side. On the desktop side, the only difference is that over there, we get a flexibility to have the ellipses and add more options. And I'll show you that in a minute. But over here, let's go and add all of these four of them step by step so we can actually see what it looks like. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on choice. Again, this is something we're very familiar with. In the question, I'm gonna actually ask a question is that how are you feeling today? All right, and I'll put some options over there. I'll say great. I'll say okay, and then I can also go ahead and add another option, and I'll just say meh, right? And I wish over here there was other flexibilities, and I'll talk more about that. First flexibility is I cannot add any subsection over there, the subtitle or the sub description. All I can do is ask the questions, and that's it. I can't put anything else as further description. In the desktop side, there is that functionality where on the top right, you know, see how you're feeling today, right next to it, there'll be an ellipsis, I can click on it, I can go ahead and add the subsections, I can't do that over here. So that's a very important tidbit to notice. But we'll keep continuing. All right, so on the bottom now, scroll down, you've got these two important options. You can go and say required, which means that if somebody's filling out this form, it is absolutely required to go ahead and fill out this question, otherwise you can't hit that submit button. And then from here, you can go ahead and say, is this going to be a single option or is it gonna be a multiple option, which in this case, it says multiple answers. So watch, right now, as you can see, there is only these three uh, you know, circles over there. But if I were to go and say multiple answers, those circles change into dots. It means telling the end user just by visually that, hey, you can actually have multiple selections over there. But just based on this question, it just makes more sense that I have it as a single selection. So I'll go and sit that, right? So we're gonna done over here. Now again, to finish building this question, you gotta click on the checkbox on the top right. So we're done over here. Next, let's go and add another question and put on text. In the questions, I'll go ahead and say, what 
did you have for breakfast, right? And here I've got those two options again. I can go and say, is it required? Which I'm gonna say yes. And then I can also say a long answer. Long answer is also more of a visual representation for the users, because when you have it the toggled off, you can see that enter your answer just shows as a single line. But if I go and put it as a long answer, it actually expands the height of that, which tells the user that, hey, you have the option to go ahead and put in a long answer. Now also notice that if just because it is a long answer doesn't mean the users actually have to put a long answer, they can still put in a single line over there, but it just gives that user, user that visual representation that, oh, I do have the option to put in a long answer. So we got it done with the single line or the text. Now I'll go to the rating. Now in the rating, we actually have one more option over here, which is the symbols. So in the question, I'll say again, how are you feeling today? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add the same thing. Over here, right below it, you see you've given these stars. In the stars, I can actually change the stars to number and I can put it in as one, two, three, four, five. Next, I can also go ahead and say, is this a required question? Which I say, yes, it is a required one, but you have to have an answer. And then after that, you've got these options to go ahead and either put in from one to five, or you can go ahead and put in from one to 10. I'm gonna put in the one to 10 just so that you can see, even though we have such minimum real estate on the width, it still fills up those 10 really well. Now, I really wish that subtitle feature was available over here because I want a way to tell the users that, hey, one is negative and 10 is positive because think about it, how are you feeling today? And the user comes and say, well, is one feeling positive or is 10 feeling positive? What is it? And I really, really wish there was an option to put in that subsection. So as a workaround in your question itself, you can go ahead and put in these double brackets and you can just feed in that information over there. So that's your workaround. All right, let's go and pick the last one, which is the date. Now date, very simple, all right? You can go ahead and just select the date and all you have basically is one option. Is it a required one? And for the date, I'll just go and say today's date, all right? So I'll again go and click on the, the check on the top right. And now we are done with our app. So what we can do is in order for me to go ahead and share this app or this form, I have to go ahead and hit that arrow on the top right. And then these functionalities, again, is very similar to what we have on the desktop side. On the desktop side, we have, you know, send and collect responses, but then you have these options. So only people in my organization can respond. If I check on that, it gives me these other options which you and I are very familiar with because it's available on the desktop side. First one on the top, anyone can respond. Then there's also the option that only people our organization can respond. What is the record name? You know, only one response per person, all of that. Now in the desktop, there are a little bit more options available over there as far as what is the start time, end time, so on and so forth. Those are all over there, which doesn't really come with this. But all said and done, we went ahead and built a quick form without any computer access, all from our mobile device, and that's pretty sweet. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and look at it from a desktop side, and we'll actually do a little side-by-side -side comparison of what it is. We'll try to rebuild these exact same three questions or four questions, and we'll just see what those, those functionalities over there. So now I've logged into my desktop and I've logged in as the exact same user in the exact same tenant. And here is the homepage, which is my office.com. Now on the top left, when I go and click on the waffle icon or the waffle menu, I see forms over here. So in this case, the difference is you actually have a place to go and select forms. Remember in the mobile device, you have to go through the office apps. Now when I go and click on office forms, immediately you can see the new ones that we've built over here. So this is the live demo. If I, that live demo one, that's the one we just built. Now, if you remember over here, you gotta go to all my forms and in your all of my forms, that's actually the ones that you just created. And this is that form. And if you click on it, it basically displays it as that form over here, all right? So that's basically it, nothing big, nothing fancy. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out of this one and we're gonna actually go ahead and do something similar. So I'll go and click on plus new form. In my plus new form, all of this was the exact same. So I'm gonna now say live demo one, but you see, the description also was available in the live demo form, but we didn't have all of this flexibility of theming and, uh, and you know, adding just a theme directly for each and every question insert. We didn't have all of that, but let's keep continuing. In the desktop one, over here, you have the same functionalities that we just saw. Choice, text, rating, date, those are all there. But you see this drop down. This drop down gives you these additional functionalities which did not come directly on the mobile side. So that's something very important to notice. Now let's go and at least try to replicate a few of them. So in that first one, I had said, how are you feeling today? Now in my, how are you feeling today? I had basically put in three options. See over here, in fact, I like these three options. I'm gonna go and add them all. 
Now, when I did all of this, I wasn't able to see all of this functionality to move it up and down and all of this. So basically the UI effect is a lot more better on the desktop side, but all said and done, we are still able to do all of this on the mobile app as well. Here's the other thing though, is that ellipses on the bottom right for more settings, this is the one that I was saying, subtitle. This subtitle was not available directly in the mobile app. And that's the one scenario where I remember we had gone in and put in, how are you feeling today from one to 10? We, the subtitle would have been so helpful to say that one's a little huh, and 10 is like, great, you know, I wish we'd have done something like that. But that's just, you know, something to think about. But all these other ones, which is required, multiple answers, all of them were the exact same. And then let me just add another one, which was the text one. The text one was again, you know, uh, what uh, did you eat breakfast? That one, again, same uh, differences over here was that you have the ability to add the subtitle over here. You don't have that in the mobile app, but in the, in the answer itself, this is the exact same. You've got the ability to go and do the long answer. You've got the ability over here to do the required one. See, there's a pop-up that came up over here is that branching option. Remember, branching option. Basically, there's three toggle switches or, or the, uh, the ellipses or the three buttons are just not available over here at all, which means you can't go in and add a subtitle or you can't even do in branching in the mobile side. So the other two are the exact same. The rating, the date, they are the exact same. And just remember that these options were not available. So now let's actually go and take a look at it from the share side. In the share side, this was the exact same. Is the ability to go ahead and add Anyone can respond, only people, specific people, all of this was the exact same. What we didn't have is the settings functionality. See, in the settings functionality, these options were not available on the mobile side. So that's something also to keep in mind that when you wanna go ahead and build with these type of options, you wanna go and do it on the desktop side. Now I wanna pause over here and kinda of tell you from my perspective, how would I use this? Now imagine if I am actually traveling, all right, and I don't have the ability to go ahead and open up my desktop, I can actually start building the form and build a really good one, at least with all the questions directly added in, directly from my mobile side. I can go and do all of that because that's exactly what we just did. I was able to go ahead and build all of it, add all the questions, let all those thoughts which are flowing through my mind in that point, go ahead and build that form directly from your mobile app, which is what we did right here. Then you can come in to the, from, from the desktop site and start adding all these other nice bells and whistles and branching and all of that. So that's just how I would go ahead and approach this, the use of the mobile apps. Keep in mind, if you still wanna build a full mobile um, form, uh, which is very simple, you know, just that scenario, four questions, nothing fancy, something to send out immediately. For example, you know, you're going to go ahead and pick up lunch for your team. You want a simple form like, hey, what do you want me to pick up? Perfect example for that. Nothing fancy, just telling your teammates, I'm picking up food, what do you want? Kind of a great example over there. All right, so let's get back into the mobile device side and look at how we're gonna edit it. Now, the first thing that I get asked is that, Daniel, how do I even find my form? Because in this scenario, it was great. You actually went in and did it like right now, which is why you see it on today, you see those two forms. Do you have any advice on how I can find just my forms? Because remember, I'm using the Office app. It's showing me everything I have over there. And that's, that's such a good question. So here's the trick that I follow. You see on the top right, you have these two icons. One is the folder icon, and the other one is the filter. Go ahead and select that filter. Then you see this pop-up that comes over there. It says content type, but one of the content types is the forms. So select forms. And the moment you do that and you click on apply, now it shows you only all the forms that you have. And then the other ones you can do, anything which is shared with me, pinned, all that, that can help you. But at least now you'll be able to find all those forms that you have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and select the second one, live demo one, because it got pushed to the bottom. That's the one that we did first. So I'm gonna go and click on that. And this is the one that we just created. And as you can see, I can now come in and go ahead and edit it. So instead of saying the live demo one, I'm gonna say live demo one from mobile, right? And I'll go and do that. I can actually understand what are the two differences between the live demo one. And then I can also come back in and I can go and make some changes. Like in this question we had had, I wanna go ahead and actually remove some of this other stuff. Now, I wanna do something, that's the very important key thing that I just talked about in my intro video over there. So let me now get out of this. We'll go into the desktop and I'll do a little change just to this one. We'll come back over here, we'll see what's gonna happen, all right? So let's go take a look. So I am now on the desktop side from the same tenant. What I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and do a refresh because remember we just changed the name of the other form and there you go, it has showed up. 
Remember, again, in this first place on the Microsoft Forms, it's only giving a preview. If you want to actually go ahead and do any changes to it, like actually go ahead and do editing and things like that, you can do it from that toggle switch or you can go and click on my all my forms on the bottom right. So that's the one. Now, if I go and click on it, it opens up the form and it gives me all this flexibility. So let me just start doing some stuff. I'll click on themes and I'll go ahead and actually apply a theme over here, which looks great. I'll go ahead and now you know, make some changes like, okay, this one was great. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and now um, move this one up over here. That's the first question because that's the first question I want to ask is how did you eat for breakfast? You know, go ahead and make some changes. This one, I'll actually say, you know what? I just want to put it as five. Let's give, you know, make it a little easier um, for the people to understand. So I went and did all of this. As you can see, I don't have to hit the save button. Microsoft Forms already does the saving. We are good. If you want to take a look at the preview, there's the preview. We are all great. So we just made a change from the desktop side to a form that was originally built from the mobile device. Now, let's go take a look at what it looks like if we try to edit it from the mobile device. All right, so we're back into the mobile device and I do see my new name, the form name that we changed. We added the from mobile. I see that show up over here. And if your case it didn't, just go ahead and click on it and pull it down so the refresh automatically happens. So now we'll actually go and click on it. All right, so remember, this is the one that we went ahead and also made changes on the desktop side. However, it was originally made on the mobile device. So Microsoft Forms remembers that, all right? So if I were to go and click on it, it is still allowing me to make any changes. I mean, in fact, it doesn't show me all the design. Remember that template that we selected, the Office template? I'm not seeing it over here. However, remember we went ahead and moved that question, which is, you know, um, what did you have for breakfast? It was the second question. We went and bumped it up to the top. That shows up over here. Also, remember how are you feeling today? It was originally 10 when we built it from the mobile app, bumped it to five, I mean, brought it down to five in the desktop. Now we can be able to see over here. Plus I'm able to go ahead and add more questions and so on and so forth. So this flexibility is still there. And this is what I like, is that I can keep going back and forth between the desktop and the mobile app, and it works. However, now let's go and take a look at this live demo one, the one you see at the bottom. That's the one that we started to build from the desktop side. So if I'm gonna click on live demo one, eh, on the top it comes and says, to edit this form, open it in Microsoft Forms on your PC or Mac. So honestly, this is great because it remembers what was the birthplace of this form. And that's a really important feature for you to understand is that don't, and so don't start planning in the wrong way. Like, you know, oh, I'm gonna go and start building this on my desktop. And then while I'm traveling, I'll finish this up on the mobile device. No, it doesn't work that way. It's the other one is I'll start building it on my mobile app. Then I'll start finishing it on my desktop and I can go back and forth as well. That is the most important item that I wanted to share with you guys today. <laughs> So hopefully you found this video helpful as we deep dive a little bit on how to build Microsoft Forms on mobile devices. And that key, key takeaway is that the birthplace of the Microsoft Form is very important. So if you plan to use this as a form or even modify it while you're traveling on the road, then make sure that you start building it from the mobile app. That way we've got the flexibility. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.